as the okay thank you yeah oh okay so again we'll, we'll welcome everyone uh, we uh yeah we're happy to have again uh dr luis alberto hernandez from, from uh, the mexico city university to, to come to give us uh, part two of his uh, of his talk about finding uh, the critical endpoint in the QCD uh, uh, diagram, you know. So, uh, and again, uh, uh, Luis was uh, was a PhD student here at uh, UCT, um, and you know went on to uh, a postdoc in uh, in the Mexico uh, uh, National University, and now uh, is a faculty at the Mexico City University, you know where. He continues to uh, do good work in, uh, oh, on QCD at, uh, at finite temperature, magnetic fields, and uh, and uh, better in density, right? So, yeah, if uh, anything, you know, if uh, last week's talk was anything to go by, then uh, we're, we're in for an, another interesting one uh, th th this week. Okay, so, uh, Luis, uh, please, uh, please take it away. All right, Mawande, thanks one more time for the uh, invitation. Um, and yes, this is the second part of, of this seminar. Um, eh, eh, the idea of this uh, second part is try to uh, show how uh, we can use an um, effective model in order to uh, try to identify where uh, the critical endpoint is located in this QCD phase diagram. So, um, eh, for for the talk today oops okay um this is the outline i will give uh, some introduction uh, some concepts that will be important today i will talk about this uh, model the linear sigma model i will show uh, the results that uh, we obtain uh, with this uh, model and uh, at the end i will try to give a summary of the, the talk uh, before to start with, with the uh, uh, slides that I prepared today, let me uh, say a few words uh, about the, the previous uh, seminar where we uh, talk about the uh, QCD phase transition. We uh, mentioned the two ways to um, try to identify the phase transition in, uh, from the theoretical side that is uh, analyzing the chiral uh, symmetry or uh, the deconfinement confinement, confinement uh, transition. Uh, we uh, mentioned uh, the system that we, uh, where we can find in this phase transition, the early universe, the Newton stars, um, the heavy ion collisions. Um, uh, also, we talk about a, a little bit uh, about the uh, features of this QCD phase diagram that I, I, I will present one more time here. Uh, that means, um, uh, uh, the ideas about where and how is the phase transition as a function of the temperature and the baryon chemical potential. And uh, uh, the last part of, of that talk was uh, uh, related with the critical endpoint that is an, a peculiar um, a point in this phase diagram that tells us that the phase transition that uh, occurs in this, uh, occurs in this. Um, a strongly interacting, interacting matter in extreme condition, uh, change the, the kind of, of the phase transition that we start uh, at low uh, chemical variant density with a crossover at some point at high uh, uh, values of, of um, this uh, chemical potential, we uh, obtain uh, or we observe another um, kind of phase transition, first order phase transition, and where is uh, that uh, boundary between the two uh, uh, kinds of phase transition is uh, where we locate the critical endpoint. So with that uh, words, let me start with the key element for the talk today. Uh, and is the idea, the idea of the screening, okay? Um, uh, here I, I, I write some points about this idea the screening related with the interaction between particles when we have matter around these two taste particles. Well, we know uh, that uh, the matter around this cloud, around one of the test uh, um, uh, charges or particles 
um, uh, uh, is involved in, in the in the uh, at the end in the interaction between these two uh, test uh, particles. So the first thing is the screening is the damping of fields caused by the presence of moving charge. Okay. Other thing is the screening is an important property of a uh, charge carrying fluids in a specific well plasmas and the QC, uh, in QCD. Uh, we have this quark gluon plasma, the free charges are uh, color charges, right? Uh, as well as electric charges, okay? But the other thing is, uh, even though the, the interaction between any two test particles, okay, you uh, put in, in your uh, rest frame two uh, particles at some distance, but you have inside or in the middle a matter, well, you will find an effect of that matter in the middle, okay? So um, we know that these two uh, test particle can decrease with distance, uh, but the average number of plasma particles between the test and particles is roughly proportional to the square of the distance, okay? So there are an important effect of that uh, 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 cloud around these uh, uh, particles, okay? Uh, another, I'm sorry, Luis, um, yes. when you mentioned that the number between uh, the two test particles is roughly proportional to the square of the distance, what are, how are you thinking about that? Because I would have thought that it would be linear, linearly dependent on the distance. So how does this square change as you change the number of spatial dimensions, for example? Okay, well, uh, the, if we think that um, we have a, a, a cloud, let, let, me, let me remember exactly uh, the, the, the idea, but um, um, the, um, if we uh, increase, um, mm -hmm, the, right, if we increase the number of, of uh, these particles, um, You say that this could be linear or should be linear? Uh, yeah, that's sort of what I would expect. Um, I mean, if I sort of do a line integral for one particle to another, you know, there's a constant density of stuff between them, then the, the number would go up with the, the length. That's how I was thinking of it. So I was wondering what what you had in mind to get a square of the distance. So, 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 yes, that's funny because I, I thought they would increase with like a, like with a volume, like, you know, <laughs> you, like, like the volume, like you, you yeah, Will, Will says you uh, expected to increase like uh, uh, linearly with the distance. Um, and I'm, uh, and I'm thinking, uh, wouldn't it be like, uh, like the distance cubed or something or? Mm. Yeah. Mm. But why? Why? Uh, why is it in between uh, the? <laughs> the between that is the answer. No, no, no. Sorry. Um, it was a joke. Um, uh, I'm not. I'm but, not. But maybe, I'm not. maybe this, maybe the 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 power is the exact power is not crucial to the argument you're making, and and maybe we can sort of take that offline. Okay, yeah, yeah, that is why it's roughly proportional, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, the point, uh, I mean, it was a wrong sentence, but the, the point is that um, obviously the medium in the middle of these uh, particles modify um, the intensity, okay, of the interaction between these two uh, test uh, particles. And uh, when we try to, uh, 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 create a model that try to reproduce what happened in the in the um, a system like this um, quark gluon plasma, or in, in these heavy ion collisions, uh, even when uh, the uh, adronize, uh, the adronization starts, we need to think that uh, there are interaction between the particles. So, and we have a lot of particles in, in this middle in medium, and we need to take into account this idea in uh, the computation of any um, dynamic uh, uh, variables or uh, dynamic uh, uh, stuff that we try to work uh, in, in the model, okay? Um, all right, um, what else? 
uh yeah that that, that, that the other thing is okay then the distance okay um, that we uh, usually uh, try to analyze typically in this kind of system uh, is characterized by the length of uh, lambda d that is called the divide radius over by um, its inverse uh, 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 variable that is the divide mass that is uh, one over lambda d and at the end when well, it's a, a cartoon that how we can think that uh, uh, we represent this cloud around this uh, particle okay so uh, this is the, the first thing that i i want to say today uh, at more or less at, at the middle of the, of the talk i will come back with these ideas and how we implement in our work uh, the screening effects in, in, in our analysis right okay only uh to remember what is this uh, qcd phase diagram and let me say that where we try to map what happened uh, with this uh, um, uh, strong interactive matter when um, we change the values of the temperatures and the uh, chemical variant chemical potential we have in the horizontal, horizontal axis sorry uh, this variant uh, uh, chemical potential in the vertical axis the temperature and we try to identify a uh, how uh, or, or, or the degrees of freedom of, of this system uh, when we change um, these uh, two values of, of temperature and, and the chemical potential. And we notice that well at low temperatures, low uh, densities, that means essentially is the low uh, energy regime. We are working with a uh, hadronic matter. Actually, we are in the confined region or with the chiral symmetry broken, okay? At some point, we in, when we increase the density energy of the system, that means we have two possibilities. We increase the temperature or increase the uh, variant chemical potential or both uh, at the same time. Okay, We will see that uh, the same kind of matter now uh, is in uh, another state uh, in the deconfined uh, region or where the chiral symmetry is restored. That means in this region we have this uh, uh, quark gluon plasma, and in this other uh, region we are working with hadrons. There are many other um, ideas around what happened at high density. That today I, I want to say anything about these uh, other uh, ideas about what happened when the temperature is low and the density is high. Uh, I will concentrate my ideas about these uh, two. Um, uh, uh, analysis and actually try to see or try to understand uh, what happened with this line, the, 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 the transition line that uh, in this case for low values of mu, this is a cartoon of course, uh, um, with a, for low values of mu, we um, have um, cross over uh, as a phase transition. This is a result from lattice QCD but a high density, low temperature, many models, okay, show what happened uh, with this kind of system and uh, the, the, the phase transition that they observe or they find uh, is um, first order phase transition. So at some point, uh, this first order first, uh, first uh, order phase transition finish or ends and start the crossover. Well, the point when happens that is the critical end point and uh, today we don't have uh, any experiment that confirm the existence of, the, of this uh, point. We don't have uh, um, any um, theoretical result uh, that uh, shows with uh, from first principle uh, the existence of this critical input, but we, uh, we want to think that um, this uh, critical endpoint exists in this um, uh, phase diagram, all right? So uh, for uh, the ideas around how we can identify this critical endpoint, well, uh, one uh, way to uh, identify is the non-monotonic behavior of these um, of accumulants uh, uh, ratios as a function of a collision energy. That is the, the, the thing that I will present today. Here um, in this uh, plot in the, the right, uh, Side, we can see 
uh, the net uh, a, a proton, okay, the, the number of, of protons, okay, uh, fluctuations and in central collisions for a gold gold uh, collision in the uh, star experiment with this uh, best the beam energy scan uh, program. So this uh, data is from that uh, analysis and uh, as you can see, well, this, this uh, beam energy scan program, uh, the idea is try to change the energy of the collision and see what happened when we decrease that energy in order to, to uh, reach um, higher uh, values of uh, density, the, the or higher values of uh, variant chemical potential. And uh, they observe the measure shows that a, a high uh, energies, okay, where the density is low, uh, it's more or less constant, flat, the, 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 the function around one, but when we decrease the energy, this uh, function start to decreasing, we observe like a minimum. And after that, uh, we have like a the increasing behavior when we decrease the energy, right? So um, these um, um, ideas, this, this behavior, okay, was discussed uh, years ago uh, by uh, many uh, uh, people uh, that this could be a signal of um, a, a criticality. Okay, uh, something else that I want to say is here, okay, we have a, a, a ratio of two uh, cumulants, the, the, the four momentum, uh, the, the four statistical momentum essentially divided by the second uh, uh, statistical momentum, okay? And uh, that uh, it, it's a signal that we can observe um, for, for criticality. Um, here is one uh, picture that I show uh, the last um, uh, talk. Um, uh, the idea is uh, try to uh, show the, the behavior of these um, uh, cumulants uh, as a, as a uh, when we um, change the the location of, of our analysis along the the transition line or the transition curve. Okay, when we are in this uh, crossover uh, region. Actually, we observe it's true uh, uh, um, for the, the second momentum and the ratio between the third and the second momentum, we see something very flat, the behavior of, of these uh, cumulants. And for the uh, ratio between the four moment, the, the four momentum divided by the second momentum, we observe a little this uh, non-monotonic behavior, but uh, the, the maximum and the minimum are not really high, okay? Compared with what happened when we try to uh, analyze uh, the behavior close to the critical endpoint, that is this other um, example, okay? Now we are close to the critical endpoint and we actually observe, looking the, the, the ratio, maybe, I don't know if, if the numbers are uh, large enough, but the, here um, is the four momentum divided by the second momentum. And we observe this, um, this uh, non-monotonic behavior clearly, okay? A peak here, and after that decrease a lot, we have a, a minimum there, and one more time increase the, 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 uh, this uh, ratio. So that is a, a, a signal that, uh, could be a signal for, for this uh, a critical endpoint. It's a behavior of uh, criticality. Um, okay. I'm sorry, uh, what are you plotting on the x-axis there? Um, yeah, thanks, uh, Will. Here in the x-axis for, for these plots, we try to change the, the value of uh, mu, okay? The, the baryon chemical potential a little, a little bit before to, to this point and try to cross what happened uh, with this uh, uh, phase transition and goes a little bit right to that value, only to see how change for a given value of T, the critical T for that mu, we fix that value of T and we move a little bit the value of, um, of the chemical potential. That is the, the horizontal axis in this um, uh, plot. 
Okay, and so then what just qualitatively is driving the fourth cumulant as you as we go from the far left to the right, so we it the fourth cumulant starts to get large compared to the second cumulant, and then it gets yes. small and in fact negative. Negative fourth cumulant is negative, and then yes. it gets larger and then it gets smaller. So what how do I something understand suddenly happening? happens? I, I, the the mm. idea is some, something you know that from from the uh, at the left side of that point, we expect to work with uh, hadrons as a degree of freedom. After uh, mm -hmm. we cross that point, we expect uh, or to have a quartz agrigon. Okay, roughly we, we know that is not a sharp uh, transition, but okay, we have these two kind of um, a, a degrees of freedom. But when we try to map what happened when we try when we uh, are close to that value. From the left, we, as you mentioned, uh, this, the, the, the second moment, the, the full momentum is uh, increases, or the, the ratio is large. And uh, at some point, when we are really, really close to uh, this uh, critical value of the uh, baryon chemical potential, something suddenly happened, okay, that decreased a lot the value, and we cross. And uh, uh, the, that value, that critical uh, value for the uh, biochemical potential, and increase one more time. What we expect, maybe something like a, a more uh, smoother, something like okay, I know that it, that some uh, the phase transition happened, something changed, okay, but the point is why the change is really. Uh, large the point is is that when we notice when we are closer and closer to the critical point that behavior is uh it's more um it's larger right so um, that is that is the key when when we cross the the the, the critical point and we are in this region in the first order phase transition um we still observe this, this the same behavior Okay, this this one. Okay, and uh, the, the 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 this behavior doesn't change. So that tells us that okay, when you reach the critical endpoint, after that you will observe the same thing. Okay, but before that critical endpoint, you can you can notice that uh, if you are far away from that point, the, the, this variation is small. That that is the, the 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 thing. Yeah. So I think you you sort of pinpointed two important qualitative features. So one is the non monoticity, and the second is that it's growing. So can can you give a qualitative understanding of what? So yes, I understand that to the left of the transition line you are hadrons, and to the right you are something else and the line represents something happening and beyond the first order, I'm sorry, but beyond the critical point, it's some <clears throat> smooth transition. Um, but what, I mean, these, these, these should be generic features of phase transitions, right? So it's yeah. like if I were to measure something related to butter and I take butter out of the fridge, you know, I start to the left-hand side of your, your, your plot here. And then I, if it's, it's assuming the butter's in the same universality class, so then, you know, butter warms up and then something is going to grow. And then, you know, when butter turns to more liquid and I can start throwing in my onions, then it's more, you know, negative and then it grows again. So, but what, like, why is the distribution getting fatter in higher cumulants and then why is it getting thinner? Ah, yeah. Okay. Let me uh, show a... Uh, a few uh, slides uh, after. Sure, this. sure, absolutely. Uh, because, if you want to go through I, your own speed. Yeah, I, I will try to uh, provide the answer in terms of the distribution. How the distribution change, okay, in order to obtain this behavior that tells us the future of that distribution, the cumulants or, or these momentums tell us some futures of these um, um, uh, distributions and why we observe this uh, uh, non-monotonic behavior. Yeah, maybe that, uh, please let me 
So, so uh, Luis, uh, what am I looking at? Are these uh, the results of uh, actual calculations that were done? Yeah. In the, the, in, what in the linear sigma model? Yeah, we we did in the linear sigma model, oh, and okay. we we identify why or what is the reason that we observe this uh, non-monotonic behavior. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, one uh, other uh, plot that is important related with this observable the ratio between these two cumulants related with the full momentum divided by the second momentum from the first stage of this beam energy scan program is uh, the, the same result that I present uh, to a slide before. We have a um, flat uh, like uh, behavior here at high energies. We start to decreasing these uh, the values of this uh, ratio, and after that, increase the uh, the, the value of, of this quantity when the energy decreases. But look at one important thing here: that these are result from other experiment. Hades, okay? Hades uh, works uh, at really low uh, collision energy, and so they provide this point, okay? What we expect uh, when we see this uh, behavior that maybe this uh, curve start to increasing and maybe diverge at some point, okay? That we actually, uh, that is something that uh, uh, shows this behavior of the of criticality. But when we cross like um, for a low energy, really low, low energies, we have this uh, value, okay? Really, really small value. Yeah, so, so sorry, Luis, another question. Um, so the collision energy, how, how does that map onto uh, like the, the temperatures and uh, and chemical, baron chemical potentials that you're looking at? Or? Yeah, uh, well, uh, for, for all, we will, um, uh, we use actually um, these uh, result from this statistical, um, uh, let me show. Uh, statistics model, the statistical model uh, here uh, made by, by Claymans and Dan group. They report that a uh, curve uh, many years uh, ago where it actually uh, we they, they report this freeze out uh, line, okay, and identify uh, as a function of the uh, energy of the collision, the values of this is uh, D, this is mu. The, the values that we can reach for that energy uh, of, of mu b and t. So we map uh, uh, the energy, okay? We put the information of the energy of the collision, we obtain this value of mu b and try to see in our model which is the critical temperature for that uh, mu b. And mm. with that uh, information, we try to map uh, the, the QCD phase diagram. Okay, and okay, and and since um, since these uh, through through the collision, like uh, these are numbers that are going to change. Though. What uh, what does this mu b and t going to represent? Is it like the maximum uh, parent density you achieve? Or yes, yes, yes. Okay, obtained by a, uh, the, the this a, a chemical freeze out a, a, a line. Okay, I see. Yeah, nice. but uh, uh, okay, uh, that uh, region is related with the uh, uh, with the chiral symmetry. This is another plot. Uh, sorry for the disorder, but uh, it's important to mention that the this uh, line is referred to the to the this uh, chemical free salt line, and you can see from lattice QCD the um, uh, chiral symmetry restoration. Uh, happens in this band, the yellow band. So we can consider that uh, both temperatures are not far uh, from each other, right? So mm -hmm. we take the values for that reason. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, here, the, the important thing is this new uh, data from Hades, okay, that uh, at really low. Uh, values of energy in the collision, we observe this uh, point that is finite and is lower than the, any of these other values, okay? 
Uh, well, the idea is try to uh, understand what happened with the theory of strong interaction. We know that we have a model or a theory, the quantum chromodynamics. Here I grow the Lagrangian that I, I'm pretty sure that all of you know this Lagrangian, but okay, we have as a degree of freedom the quarks, we have uh, six different flavors of quarks. Each of these quarks has a color. Um, here actually we have, we have the interaction between this quark with the gluon, okay? And here is the complete gauge uh, sector um, that uh, here is the explicit expression for that uh, uh, term G mu nu alpha, okay? Um, A and B run from uh, one to NC, NC is the number of colors, alpha, beta, and gamma run from one to NC squared minus one. Okay, we know that this uh, theory is a gauge theory with a local uh, symmetry group, S, U, N, C. I insist that N, C is the number of colors for the real world. We, uh, world, we know that, uh, that N, C is equal uh, to three. The fundamental fields uh, are the quarks, okay? Uh, usually we call the matter fields in this um, uh, theory. And um, the gluons are the gauge fields, okay? Um, well, one um, feature of this uh, Lagrangian is that in the limit that each one of the NF, uh, that is the flavor, uh, the number of flavors of quarks fields is massless, and the mass of the quarks is equal to zero. Uh, we uh, observe that QCD shows the chiral symmetry. That actually, it's a good approximation for the lightest uh, flavors, that is the up, down, and the strange. Uh, Quarks, not for the other ones, but in that case, we can uh, assume that these masses compared with the masses in the spectrum of, of the hadrons, uh, they, uh, they are uh, small and we approximate the masses equal to zero. And we uh, say that we, we are in the chiral uh, symmetry uh, regime. Okay, but it works with this uh, theory. Um, it's not a uh, easy in, in order to, to try to uh, compute everything uh, at a low values of mu. Well, we can use a lattice QCD, but at high values of, me, of mu, the, the variant chemical potential is not a, a, a possible work with, with, with that a numerical uh, approximation. So um, our idea was try to um, uh, uh, use an effective model that try to copy some uh, uh, future of this QCD phase diagram. Actually, the idea is that, that we try to reproduce the, 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 the future is the chiral symmetry in, in our theory. The model that we will use is the linear sigma model that is, is a, a model that uh, has this spontaneous chiral symmetry breaking in analogy with the QCD uh, um, theory. Uh, the Lagrangian is, is this one that I write here, okay? We have four degrees of freedom, the sigma meson um, and the three pions, uh, neutral and the two charged pions, okay? That are encoded in this uh, P uh, vector, P zero, P plus, P minus, okay? And, um, in order to allow this uh, um, spontaneous chiral uh, uh, symmetry uh, uh, breaking, we uh, do the shift along the uh, sigma uh, direction. We uh, try to uh, go from, from the, uh, the zero of our uh, red frame to uh, uh, some other point uh, different from zero. And when we uh, implement that shift, that means in this Lagrangian, please uh, change sigma by sigma plus uh, B, that in our case is the vacuum expectation value, that is the uh, order parameter of this uh, theory, okay? When we implement that change, actually, well, we modify this term and this term, okay? And at the end, when we, um, factorize the terms proportionally to sigma square and the pi on the square that tell us the, ma the terms, uh, the mass square uh, terms, we obtain, obtain these two dynamical masses. 
In this Lagrangian, we have this is a, a, a the mass parameter square in the Lagrangian for, for, for our theory. And this lambda is the coupling constant between these uh, fields, the sigmas and, and the, well, all the mesons uh, fields. Okay. Well, and we, we have these two expressions for the dynamical masses, okay, that depends on lambda, on this a v, the vacuum expectation value, and this a, a squared is larger than zero. And the potential, if we work with two degrees of freedom instead of four degrees of freedom, okay, look or think like this pion is only one uh, uh, pion instead of, of three pions, we can uh, plot this kind of potential that the radial direction is actually the sigma direction and the uh, angular direction is the pion um, uh, field, okay? Uh, when we are located here, we can see this actual um, uh, symmetry, okay? But when we are located here, when we do the shift in the radial direction, that is the sigma direction, actually we lost that uh, the, the possibility to see that actual symmetry, okay? Because we, if we try to see what happened uh, in the angular direction around this point, we don't see any symmetry, okay? But the symmetry, uh, the global symmetry is there, okay? So that is uh, why we call this spontaneous um, symmetry breaking, okay? In order to see the shape of this um, uh, potential in the sigma direction, actually, we parameterize this, uh, a, a potential with the V, the value of V, and we obtain this expression minus A squared divided by two, V multiplied by V squared plus lambda divided by four times V to the fourth. That, uh, well, this term is really is, is the most important one when V is, uh, is small. So that is why we observe this uh, decreasing behavior. At some point, uh, the, the, the relevance of these two terms are equal, and we obtain the minimum of this function located in the root square of a squared divided by lambda. And after that, when v uh, increases, okay, the most uh, uh, relevant term, the, the, the leader uh, term is this v to the fourth, and that is why we observe that the potential increases. Okay, so. All of this information is the, the, the information from, from the Lagrangian, okay? It is a classical uh, information, okay? We don't have any, um, any uh, quantum fluctuation or thermal fluctuation in this, um, uh, in this um, result. But if we uh, try to see the vacuum structure from the partition function, okay, in terms of the, of the order parameter, V, okay? Within a, a volume, we can uh, say the, the magnitude or, or the value of that volume, and we specify some temperature. Okay, we uh, we have here the partition function, and we observe that this partition function has this uh, shape. Okay, so when we change, okay, if we if we have here something else that tell us that there are some dependence of the temperature of the chemical potential. Of course, the shape of this partition function will, will change, okay? And that is how we try to uh, analyze the behavior of these cumulants. If we try to extract the futures of this uh, distribution, well, we try to see um, if we observe monotonic or non-monotonic behavior of these cumulants, okay? So here is only a three level, that means is the this potential that has not, uh, uh, we, we don't include any uh, uh, quantum fluctuation or thermal, thermal fluctuation, it's only uh, the classical term, okay? So we observe this distribution, okay? If we want to uh, start to compute uh, uh, thermal correction, well, we start in this perturbative series and the first term is the one loop uh, thermal correction. That means that we are uh, building the uh, effective potential. That means in this case is the three level uh, contribution plus the one loop uh, correction. This uh, B uh, is related with the bosons because because at this uh, point, we have only mesons as a degree of freedoms and all of them are bosons, okay? 
uh, in, um, uh, at the end, uh, we will uh, include uh, fermions in our analysis, and that is why now we refer with B, but it's not necessary. But the notation uh, to be consistent, uh, we will keep this B as a notation. Okay, well, here is the uh, three potential. Here is the expression in the imaginary uh, time formalist, the mass to bar formalist. Um, uh, how we compute the one loop contribution to this effective potential. We sum over all the Matsubara frequencies. This is the Matsubara frequencies for uh, 2 pi and t. This is for bosons, okay? And we uh, integrate over the three uh, momentum, special uh, momentum directions. And we have this, uh, the, logarithm, the logarithm of uh, the root square of our uh, propagation. Okay. Um, actually, for this work, we will consider the approximation of large T. The idea is try to uh, keep an analytic expression in order to see which of the elements of this uh, expression are relevant for the behavior that we try to uh, see that is this uh, non monotonic behavior of the, the region of homologs. Okay, that is why we try to keep the analytic expression, where in the large uh, T limit or approximation, here is the uh, three level potential and here is the one loop uh, uh, thermal correction that as a consequence as T is the largest scale, well, the, the dominant term is this T to the fourth uh, term. After that, we have this uh, T squared term time, times the mass uh, square of these bosons. The next one, is a uh, linear in T and cubic uh, in, the, in, the, in the mass. And the last one is uh, proportional to the uh, mass to the fourth, okay? Here in red color, I uh, try, I want uh, to say that these two terms, okay, has some problems, have some problems. The, 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 the problem is that remember what is the expression for these masses? One uh, for the sigma mass, okay, is three times lambda v square minus a square, and for the other one is um, a, this is square, sorry, for the pions is lambda v square minus a square. Okay, if v this v is equal to zero, both uh, masses are negative, and this term is complex or completely imaginary, and other option is that uh, this mv square is equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, this logarithm diverge, okay? So we have some problems with that terms. We need to solve that problems. And the idea is try to include uh, a more corrections, okay, in this series. And the next correction that we will consider is the ring diagrams that tell us that we are taking into account the uh, screening effects in our uh, model. Okay, so we need to cure these two uh, terms, all right? Uh, well, here is the, the idea to um, uh, show that the, the, the region where we expect the, the chiral uh, transition, okay, in this QCD uh, phase diagram, and the um, in this uh, band that tells us the chemical freeze out uh, when it happens, we have uh, that these two temperatures are more or less the same, it's not, uh, are not quite different, okay? So we will consider in, uh, in our analysis that we can use um, information from this um, statistical model, the, the, the Hadron resonance gas model, in order to um, uh, find the combinations of temperature and chemical potential as a function of the uh, energy of the collision, okay? Uh, the analysis tools, well, we try to uh, see the fluctuation of uh, conserved quantities. Uh, we, we can think this as a power tool to experimental, uh, experimentally locate the critical endpoint. Um, well, this is the study of depend by event fluctuation in these relativistic heavy ion collisions, okay? And they, these fluctuations are sensitive to the early thermal properties of the created medium. 
to locate the critical endpoint, one look uh, looks for fluctuation that deviate from once to that corresponds to this um, hydrogen resonance gas model. Okay, and uh, the other thing is that the cumulus uh, generating function uh, is we, we need to consider uh, these um, different cumulants. Okay. And the most important thing is that the cumulants higher than the second order uh, vanish for this uh, for a Gaussian uh, probability distribution. Non-Gaussian fluctu uh, fluctuations are assigned by uh, non-vanishing higher uh, order cumulants. And the other thing is that uh, two important higher order uh, momentums are the skewness uh, and the kurtosis. The skewness uh, measures the asymmetry of the distribution function and um, the uh, kurtosis uh, measures its uh, sharpness. Okay. Actually, today I will present the analysis around this kurtosis, not not, not uh, the results we about this skewness. Okay. And um, for this hadron resonance gas model, we know that the ratios of the cumul uh, the cumulants uh, of even order um, are equal to one. Okay. So if we find some deviations, okay will uh, signal of this uh, critical behavior in particular for uh, the for the variance uh, sigma squared and the kurtosis actually the the, the product uh, between these two quantity is equal to the ratio between the the, the two cumulants related with the full momentum divided by the second momentum okay and well we look deviation from uh, one in this quantity as a function of the a collision energy as a signal of the critical endpoint. That is the, the uh, plot that I showed previously, okay, from uh, these experiments. We will try to see if uh, we reproduce the same behavior with this uh, effective model, okay? So- I'm sorry, so is, there, is, is there an obvious reason why the Hadron Resonance Gas Model gives ratios of cumulative even order that are one? Ah, uh, actually, well, it's because the um, uh, this uh, uh, model, okay, um, has um, uh, it's like a, a ideal gas by by the uh, made by by uh, hadrons, okay. It's a um, how do you say in English uh, mean field uh, uh, theory and the distribution that. Uh, reproduce or, or, or follows these ideas is the scalar uh, distribution where we find that the uh, ratio of these cumulants always for even a very uh, even cumulants is always equal to one that is the reason okay so it's it's um because the gas is not interacting that that's exactly. the critical point okay yeah. great thank you sure all right okay well the, um, the 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 actual uh, the, the model that we will use is the linear sigma model, but we include uh, more degrees of freedom. That in this case are quarks, the lightest quarks, uh, up and down uh, quarks, and the Lagrangian is quite similar. Uh, the, the previous uh, the present previously, the first line is the same one that I uh, write. Uh, two or three slides before, but the second line is the new terms in the Lagrangians. This is the, the, the uh, kinetical energy term for the uh, fermions. This psi represent this fermion uh, or quarks uh, degrees of freedom. And here is the interaction between the uh, anti-quark sigma and quark, and the other one is anti-quark pions and the quark, okay? We implement the same, uh, idea we need to do a shift in the sigma direction in order to uh, allow this spontaneous symmetry breaking we obtain one more time these dynamical masses for the sigma meson for the pions okay and as you can see here we have a new term that uh, provides the mass of these uh, quarks okay that at the beginning we don't have okay uh, so with these three masses, we, we, we are able to analyze what happened with the chiral symmetry uh, when it's restored or not. Uh, the idea is try to follow this uh, V, that is with the vacuum expectation value in the theory, and see uh, how that uh, uh, value travels for a finite value uh, to a, a, a zero uh, value. Okay. 
Um, of course, appear in, in many new terms when we uh, write explicitly all uh, all the terms here and here. We have encode all of that in, uh, other terms in this uh, uh, like LVI. I comes from the interaction. This is the the bosonic sector, and this is the fermionic sector. Okay. Okay, and well. We will try to compute the effective potential when we consider now bosons and fermions, uh, mesons and quarks. Okay. Well, the idea is try to obtain the thermodynamics. Okay. So uh, we compute uh, the effective potential. In this case, is um, the uh, three-level potential, the boson, the one-loop boson contribution, the one-loop fermion contribution, and at the end, we will include the ring contribution that, uh, one more time, this information tells us the effect of this spinning around them, the particles, okay? So one more time, here is the expression for the three level, here is the expression for the one loop uh, a boson a contribution. Now this is new, is the contribution for the one loop a fermion contribution. Uh, that is more or less the same expression as the, in the case of um, the bosons, but in this case now we have the uh, inverse of, of the uh, fermion propagator. One more time, we are working in the Matsubara uh, formalis. In this case, the Matsubara frequencies are two n plus one p pi t. Okay. And uh, this is the expression for the ring diagrams. Okay, in the in the next slide, I will show the Feynman diagrams for these rings. Okay, but this is the expression for that uh, ring diagrams. And um, here we have a new element that is the self energy of uh, the the bosons. Here is um, how we. Uh, compute uh, or, or the result of the computation of that uh, self energy because we are working in the high uh, uh, temperature uh, re regime actually the dominant term is t square okay this is the contribution from the boson and this is the contribution from the quarks okay the fluctuations that uh, has inside a quark and anti quark uh, uh, propagators okay so we Put this information here, and we obtain the, the contribution from the ring diagrams. Only to uh, uh, be explicit with what is the meaning of these uh, ring diagrams, that means the plasma screening effects in the thermal field theory. Actually, well, uh, the one loop contribution, okay, we know that is this bubble, okay, but we, if we want to include more information, okay, in this perturbative series, we are able to, to say, okay, maybe two bubbles, two bubbles, uh, the two loops, okay? It's the next uh, order in this series at high temperature, that is not true. Actually, if we uh, put fluctuation in this um, line, that is the propagation of, of, of a boson, okay? That starts here, for example, was uh, around this line and come back to the same point. Well, at some point along this curve, we, we um, we can observe a fluctuation of that uh, boson, but it's possible to observe two fluctuations or three fluctuations and so on and so forth. And we sum over all of that uh, contributions, okay? All of that uh, terms from one uh, to infinity. And after the uh, summation, we obtain this result that I wrote here, okay? So that is the uh, contribution from the ring uh, diagrams. Well, this is the, the result, okay? In the high uh, temperature limit, we have the effective potential. One more time, the first line is the three level potential. The second and third line are the contribution from the uh, boson uh, fields, the pions and uh, the sigma meson. But look what happened when we include these um, ring diagrams actually we modify the term that in, at the beginning was t times mv to, uh, to the third, okay? Now we replace that term by this one that uh, tells us, okay, it's not only the mass of the, the mass square of the particle, we include something information, some information about the interaction, okay, 
of that particle with uh, the the cloud around and that that particle in caught in this um, uh, self energy. Okay, so in this case, if uh, the this mass, uh, let me say the mass of the pion lambda v squared minus a squared is negative or is equal to, to zero, doesn't matter because this um, uh, uh, term, the self, uh, uh, it, the self energy is positive and actually uh, opens the, the, the window where we, where we uh, are working. And this term is not um, uh, imaginary anymore. Okay, so we solve the problem of that term with this uh, screen effects. And the other thing is, look, the, the term uh, proportional to m to the fourth, now is the logarithm between the uh, renormalization scale in our uh, model uh, divided by t squared. We don't have any dependence on the mass square here. So one more time, we don't have the, the, the problem that the, if the mass goes to zero, the logarithm diverge. Now it's final. When we fix this value and we change the value of t, always this logarithm is finite. Okay. And the last uh, uh, part is related with the fermion is the contribution for the for the fermions for, uh, uh, at one loop. Okay. We have one more time the realization scale. Here mu is the quark chemical potential because here we are working with quarks only. And uh, MF is the mass of the of, of this fermion G times B in this theory. Okay, uh, so with this information, we try to uh, see uh, the, the behavior of this uh, ratio of cumulants. But uh, for that, we need to fix the parameters, the free parameters of our theory. We have three parameters that uh, are free: lambda, the coupling constant uh, for uh, uh, the bosons, uh, a square is other free parameter, and the other um, parameter is g. That uh, g is the coupling constant between the quarks and the uh, the mesons. Okay, so we need to fix some uh, some way these um, uh, values. And actually, we use the information from Lattice QCD. Lattice QCD provides the curvature of the phase transition at low chemical uh, barium chemical potential. We use that information in order to fix these three parameters. Okay, we try to find the the value of lambda g and a that follows that curvature. Okay, um, so all the analysis around uh, mu uh, v equal to zero, the barium chemical potential around to zero in order to uh, obey this relation. Okay, so with that information we fix the, this parameter is not unique the the solution it's, it's not linear the, the equation so we have a, a, a set of parameters that satisfy this equation actually in, in the paper we report many different combinations of lambda g and a but in this case I will present only one combination okay so uh, here is uh, how it looks like the effective potential okay in uh, for this uh, model, uh, the uh, first curve, that is the black one, uh, is uh, for uh, zero biochemical potential and the critical temperature in that, uh, with that uh, chemical potential. And you can see that um, is uh, flat around uh, zero, the potential, and they start increasing, okay? That means the, the value of the, uh, the BEF, the vacuum expectation value is in zero. And this, that is uh, um, the thing uh, where, where the chiral symmetry is restored. When we increase the baryon chemical potential, actually we increase that value up to the value of uh, the critical endpoint. This is the blue uh, line, this one, okay? And uh, we observe that still flat at, at, at close to uh, V equal to zero, but far from, from that value, still see this, the, the same flat behavior and start increasing, okay? That is important, yes, because when we observe the first, the first order phase transition, actually 
what we observe in the potential is a um, degenerate a minima. Okay, that means that we observe like a hump in the middle. Okay, and that is a signal that we have two uh, uh, like uh, two um, uh, values of, of of this vacuum expectation value. We have like a two degrees of freedom uh, living uh, in the same uh, situation. Okay, and other thing that we can see uh, this uh, first for the first transition is if we decrease the value of this temperature, actually we will have something like that. We have this minimum. And when we increase the temperature, we start to move in that minimum to this point, okay, continuously. But after that, when we increase more the, the temperature, okay, the, uh, right, the minimum jumps to zero, okay? So we have a discontinuity, okay, in, in this uh, uh, order uh, parameter. And that is a signal of a first order phase transition. Okay, so the, the, the critical endpoint is the last value when we don't observe that hump or that uh, degenerate medium in, in terms of this uh, 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 plot. Okay, um, something happens uh, in general in, uh, when we try to analyze the free energy for. Uh, uh, some other models that, okay, when we are in the uh, crossover region, we have this uh, zero uh, value for the BEV in, in zero, okay? Um, and we observe uh, this uh, increasing behavior for the uh, potential, but when we are close to the critical endpoint, the potential is flat and start increasing, okay? And when we are in this uh, first order first transition, we observe that the, like this uh, hump that I mentioned before, okay? So that is consistent with, with, the, with the ideas of what happened with the effective potential. Hey, what happened with the partition function in the linear schema model up to Rins diagram order? This is a result that we report in this um, uh, paper, okay? Now I put the information of uh, the effective potential that I showed two or three slides uh, before in the partition function and look, how it looks like when we are in different situation. The first one is, okay, we are at zero uh, biochemical potential, okay, that is this uh, solid uh, black line, line, okay, is this one. Okay, it's, it's, it's this behavior, but look what happened with when we are in the critical end, end point. The, the distribution, this has this flat uh, behavior here, okay? And the dispersion no, around the, the central value is large, it's larger, sorry. But when we are in the first order phase transition, that is this other situation, actually one more time, the distribution is sharper, but we have another two peaks here, okay? So when we try to analyze what happened with the statistical momentums, we will see a, a dramatic change you know, between this behavior, this other, and this one, okay? So, um, and which is the, the, the most important term in, 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 in the analysis that produced these three very different uh, behaviors actually, is, um, sorry, sorry, is this one, okay? Looks, this is like uh, three uh, or lambda V square minus A square plus P V. When this term is close to zero, actually V, this everything is uh, to um, the three over uh, two uh, power. So actually we, have something cubic v to the three uh, to the third okay this term is very important to see this monotonic behavior is the key without that term we don't observe that uh, uh, non-monotonic behavior in in this uh, in the duration of the cumulus so the, the the point of, of the, the the result that we obtain is okay we need to see that kind of cubic uh, terms in our analysis that are uh, here uh, and are important. And um, that uh, is the, the most important thing in order to observe 
the non-monotonic behavior. Here is what we observe when we try to see what happened with the cortosis. With the cortosis, when we are at a far from, from the uh, critical endpoint in the, in the crossover region, okay, we have this uh, black uh, curve, okay? That, okay, has this decreasing behavior and has a minimum, local minimum, and after that, it starts increasing. But actually, it's quite smooth compared with the behavior with the other uh, curves, okay? When we are uh, closer to the critical end, end, end point, we observe that we start to observe this uh, increasing uh, or this maximum, local maximum here, minimum here, okay? And when we are exactly in the critical end point, one more time, we observe a peak here, okay? A minimum here and start to increasing and uh, one more time, the, 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 the function is um, flat. And when we are in the, in the first order phase transition, the key point from a point of view is observed two peaks, okay? When we are working or we uh, observe the first order phase transition, we observe these two peaks always. In the cross uh, over region, we observe only one peak. And the last uh, curve that shows that, uh, the, that one uh, peak is the critical endpoint, okay? It's the same plot that I uh, show uh, at the beginning of the talk. Here is the uh, baryon chemical potential. We try to see what happened around to the critical baryon uh, chemical potential. And in, here is the cortosis, okay? Uh, well, the, 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 the um, phase diagram that we obtained is this one, okay? We, um, we have this uh, red line. Actually, in this model, without uh, an explicit uh, breaking symmetry, uh, we, we have a second order phase transition instead of a crossover, okay? Uh, we locate the critical endpoint here, and after that, we have these uh, uh, points for the first order phase transition. Okay, um, this is for a one set of parameters. We play with, with, with that uh, parameters and actually always we obtain something uh, uh, similar to this uh, plot, okay? Using this uh, freeze out uh, line, okay? We, we can uh, parameterize the chemical, uh, the baryon chemical potential as a function of the energy of the collision. And with that information, we try to uh, plot uh, uh, this uh, uh, variable, the, the, the cortosis times the variance, that is the uh, ratio between the uh, cumulant from the full momentum divided by the cumulant from the second momentum. And uh, we observe, okay, more or less the same thing that the experiment observed at the really high energies, okay. We observe a flat uh, behavior, okay? It's uh, around one, okay? But we, when we are in, uh, in the low regime of uh, the energy collision, we observe a decreasing behavior. We have a minimum and start increasing this, uh, this uh, quantity, okay? The red uh, line, the vertical red line is where we locate the a critical endpoint from our analysis we locate in that uh, value of energy or uh, the critical endpoint okay but let me uh, say a little uh, more about this plot this is assuming uh, is assuming in this region okay and when we cross this line that represents the critical endpoint look please we observe these points. We have three different points because we are uh, playing with the different values of the volume of our system, okay? We, we, we want to see if there is a, some dependence on, on this volume, okay? And well, in a, any in every case, okay, we observe these three points. You remember what happened with the uh, value that report Hades, report something uh, after, or before this, this uh, line in, in this case, and was really small, okay? With a error bar really large, okay? So, well, we observed something uh, like that in, uh, in our analysis. 
Okay, well, as a summary, because we, I'm in, uh, yes, Daniel. Uh, sorry, just on that last slide, the zoomed in bit. Uh, it's not really clear to me where that zooming into, because the uh, Y axis on the zoomed in bit is at the zero. Okay, so is it not uh, visible on the on the big? Graph? Yeah, it's not visible here. Okay. Because okay. look the scale. I start yeah. from okay. point nine and look here the scale. Okay. Yeah. 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 That is why we don't see in this plot, and that is why we uh, show like a zoom in in the region here close to this uh, uh, region, and and show the the full uh, range. Uh, in order to, to see these uh, points, okay? Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, well, uh, as a summary, uh, deviation from this uh, hydrogen resonant uh, gas behavior uh, when using this uh, linear signal model compared to quarks or with quarks as an effective model of the ring diameter contribution, we observe this uh, non ontonic behavior of, of these uh, quantities. Well, the ring diagrams uh, inclusion is equivalent to introducing a spinning effects at final temperature and a uh, baryon chemical potential. And only with that information is possible to carry out this analysis. Without that uh, terms, it's not possible to see that behaviors, okay? And uh, well, we, uh, with this work, we um, uh, try to um, find uh, some signal that show, show, show us where is the critical endpoint using the divergence of this? Um, well, this behavior that looks like diverge of this uh, fructose time the variance, we locate uh, the critical endpoint in a region uh, in the horizontal axis between uh, 786 MeVs and 849 MeVs, and the, in the vertical axis, the, the temperature. Uh, we uh, have this uh, 70.3 mega electron volts for the temperatures. And in the region when we observe the critical endpoint as a function of the energy, well, maybe uh, the, uh, I, the, the good experiment for that, uh, for or to find that a uh, critical endpoint is Nika or Hades because they, they will work in, the, in, the, in that energy region, okay? So, well, thanks uh, so much for your attention and, well, if you have a question, please. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for that nice presentation, Luis. So, so do, do we have any questions? Please feel, feel free to ask questions. Uh, Luis, oh, well, uh, very, very well, nice. please, yeah. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Uh, could you, it, it seems like everything is controlled by this V parameter. Yeah, let me, yeah, okay. Uh, v, V, the BEF, the vacuum expectation value, right? That is uh, here. This little V, it seems like you, you made all the plots and, you know, all of your phase transition and all your effective potential. Yeah, it all depends on the little V, yeah. So could you give me a sense of what this little v is telling us? This, this, uh, this b? Yeah, the, the uh, little v. Ah, this other one, sorry. Uh, no, uh, v is in victor, not b is in bottom quark. Ah, uh, v yeah. is in victory, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that v uh, in our theory, it is um, let me uh, maybe with a picture, okay? Is the 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 minimum energy, okay, that we observe in our potential in the direction of the sigma uh, meson, okay? Actually, is the minimum of our potential, and um, when uh, we observe a theory that uh, the minimum of our theory is not located in, in zero, okay? And we lost the, uh, 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 the possibility to observe the, the global symmetry of our system no? in exactly that uh, minimum energy state or the ground state of our theory. 
Actually, we that is a, a one way to uh, define the, this spontaneous symmetry breaking. And the idea is, okay, if in vacuum, our theory uh, shows that behavior, what happens when we include the thermal or the matter uh, corrections, okay? That is a system or a many body system that interact, thermalize, etc. cetera. Uh, that minimum is still in the same place or uh, change the, the location. And actually we observe as a um, function of the temperature, when we increase the temperature, for example, ignoring the, the uh, biochemical potential, we observe that that BEF moves to, to zero, okay? How that uh, moves to zero, it, it's a, a good question because it's continuously or not continuously and that, that will tell us something uh, about the phase transition. Why we are telling uh, uh, the, the phase transition? Because the vacuum expectation value is related with the masses and when when the, the v is equal to zero you can see from the lagrangian in the case of the linear sigma model the mass for the fermions the quarks goes to zero for example we start with a massive ter a massive fermions and we end with a, a non-massive uh, fermions um, so that is why it's important to analyze what happened what we, uh, uh, with that v uh, how we can um, uh, see the the, the uh, behavior of that v as a function of t or as a function of, of, of mu v. That is the, the meaning of that v. Yeah. Anyways, just just to add in on this a little bit. I mean, it's been a while that I've thought about this in more detail. But uh, if I look at this, you have you have more than one parameter, right? We have uh, you, you do have V, the vacuum expectation value. So this is the distance of how far out this minimum is. But then there is also the question of how, how large the bump in the middle is, in a way, uh, right? You can right, you can imagine things that are, uh, well, where the vacuum expectation value is equally wide out, far out, but the whole thing is much, much flatter, right? There's not much of a bump in the middle. So, so things are going to behave, if, if you think about this dynamically, things are going to be much, much slower, right? In, in, in falling into the right vacuum and things like this. So the question is, in, in the sense, maybe one might want to choose um, variables that, that talk about, these, about this a little bit uh, more directly. Um, just trying to think of how to do this properly. Right, uh, as in, as in, uh, flatness versus actually, right? I mean, you can you can scale, you, right? If you can scale this in a self-similar way, then you expect the same behavior. Uh, but if you if you distort the shape by making it either steeper or, or, or wider, you're doing you're doing a different thing. Um, yeah, okay. Um, well, uh, the idea is. Um, I, I think it doesn't matter the, 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 the how high is that a, a um, uh, maximum local uh, maximum in in, uh, in our theory. Uh, the point is, if we want to analyze the, the how the minimum moves as a function of the energy. In this case, we uh, take uh, this uh, thermodynamics. Uh, approach and, and we think that the, the, the temperature and the uh, chemical potential encodes that the uh, energy. Uh, we need to observe that this system uh, is a uh, match with the um, asymptotic freedom. And we only want to see if we increase the, the energy density in our system that moves to, uh, the, uh, to zero. At the same time, the, the height of, of that uh, maximum local maximum decreases okay but um uh, and i never uh, think about if the shape or, or is deep that minimum or not i only think that okay how we can move that minimum to to to, to zero um, I guess I'm still confused. Um, so normally 
you get the linear sigma model from breaking chiral symmetry at the level of the QCD Lagrangian. And so then the sigma gets a mass and then the pions are the massless Goldstone modes. This is something divorced from that, as far as I can tell, that you have some sigma thing. With, will your sigma and your pi have the same mass with lambda is zero? Well, in fact, they're they're negative masses, so it's you're you're not really starting with a normal linear sigma model. Actually, actually, yes. I start look if I uh, actually I need to evaluate the masses in the ground state in order to find the the value of these masses, right? And this, okay, if I put the information of V0 here, okay, I have two A squared. That is the mass of the sigma uh, meso. And for this one, M pi squared, this is equal to zero. We start with the with this uh, symmetry broken, okay? Because we know that uh, at the level of these mesons, the spectrum between these uh, chiral partners, it should be, equal the masses if the chiral symmetry is restored. But if not, we observe that uh, difference between these two masses. That is the, the point that we start. Yeah, so I'm, again, I'm, I'm sort of, con so then you're, you're talking about a Mexican hat potential with respect to the sigma and the pi rather than with respect to some more fundamental theory that leads to the sigma and the pi. But the, uh, OK. Uh, I think the the, uh, the idea of this model is to try to, to reproduce the, this uh, phenomenon that this is spontaneous chiral symmetry breaking, but at the same time we try to uh, we we can uh, translate information in the, in the QCD uh, theory using I don't know this uh, low uh, energy relation Gelman Oxrenner for example and see that this vacuum expectation value in this theory is completely related with the chiral uh, condensate uh, in QCD. That is one more time the vacuum expectation value in that theory and is not uh, equal to zero and that uh, provides signal that the masses of, of the of, um, of these um, uh, the masses of the sorry the masses of the quarks are uh, different or we assume that are finite but uh, different from zero. That is the, the same idea, but in terms of these uh, uh, meson degrees of freedom. Okay, super. So the chiral condensate, I mean, one can measure that on the lattice, right? Right. And so one knows what that V should be, right? Yeah. And yeah, so we know. What, what is. Yeah, go ahead. No, 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 you, you, please. Yeah, so what, what is the value of V and how does that compare to the values you're, you're using? Because it looks like you're using that just as a knob that you can turn up and down at will. Yeah, using uh, uh, this uh, gamma node renner, V0 is related with F pi, F pi, uh, this um, decay constant for the pi. -L. So uh, that is like uh, 92 MeV, right? So with that, uh, with that information, for example, we can fix the value of lambda A square in this uh, model and work in vacuum, of course, right? Uh, but if we want to work in other uh, regime uh, that at high uh, temperature or high densities, of course, the value of F pi will be not the same, okay? And we expect that the value of A square, lambda, and G in, in the complete model change in, the, in, the, um, uh, in that other regime. But yeah, that is the way that we relate that, that uh, V0 with the chiral uh, condensate. Okay, so then when you showed these plots with a V, you know, could you point to the vacuum and then presumably the the V at, at, when one is outside of the vacuum is not too different from the vacuum V, right? Yeah, formally that's true, but um, V it's at the same time the, the parameter, uh, how we parameterize the, 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 the curve in the um, uh, all the, the region of, of this radial, uh, this uh, uh, radial uh, variable in this um, uh, plot. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I think 
our goal is that we want to learn something about QCD, not something about this, you know, any arbitrary value of V. So you, you know, you could take V to be anything and, and that's fine, but that, I mean, that's sort of a mathematical question rather than a uh, physics yeah. question. Well, I think this it is physical. It is physical, right? The value of V, the shape of this thing changes as temperature changes. Mm -hmm. So you're playing with uh, your, you're parametrizing, uh, you're looking at, uh, you're looking at this theory at different temperatures is in, in a way, right? I mean, you're, uh, so that way that gives you some, some insight in what such a theory does. Uh, I mean, of course, there is an issue with QCD uh, that, when you near the chiral phase transition, QCD wants to deconfine. Uh, those those are linked. So uh, you you probably learn something about the approach, but you would have would have to be careful about um, sort of trusting the thing beyond. Right when, when yeah, degrees think, of freedom are no longer the, the right degrees of freedom. Let me let me try a different attack then. What is What's a reasonable range of values for V? Which the ah well yeah that is is it's a, a good point right the the if even if I I plot uh, the potential uh, uh, from zero to um, uh, any other uh, value, right? As, uh, as a, this potential as a function of V, our theory is focused to analyze what happened around this. Uh, that, that's true. The, 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 the reason why we try to plot all the range is because we need to see if appears or not this uh, hump here, okay? But the analysis that we implement is always follow the region what happened around the minimum. Okay, yeah, that, that is the, uh, the, the, the real uh, analysis is around only uh, uh, of, uh, around this minimum here, or well, in this case, it's, it's in zero, right? Uh, but the idea to show what happened with, with the full range is to see uh, these, uh, for example, these features of, of the effective potential, if appears or not a hump. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, good, good. Uh, okay, uh, uh, maybe uh, 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 one related question uh, for me. Um, so, so you you've got uh, these values now uh, of, uh, of the critical endpoint, right? Uh, this mu b and this uh, this yeah. temperature. Yeah. Um. So. Do these have anything to do with uh, with what uh, I will really measure experimentally? Since this is a linear sigma model and not uh, and not a QCD. Yeah, well, it's difficult to say that uh, if we want to say something uh, that uh, an experiment will uh, measure. The point is, uh, it's an effective model, and we are not working with all the degrees of freedom. Uh, actually. Mm -hmm. The best uh, thing that we can uh, do here is maybe increase the the, the number of flavors instead mm -hmm. of up and down, include the strange in order to have the complete algebra no? uh, related mm -hmm. with the chiral symmetry. Uh, that means in the in the meson sector we need to in include all the the, the mesons uh, made of uh, of these um, uh, quarks. Um, and of course, uh, um, maybe include variance in the analysis. So uh, uh, the, the idea is to improve this in order to compare with experiment. It's quite difficult because mm -hmm. we need to a lot of degrees of freedom and compute all the interaction between them, all the one loop fluctuations. And sounds uh, uh, quite uh, Difficult. This is a, a, a phenomenological approach. Try to see, as Hebert uh, mentioned, how we can um, uh, really uh, tackle the problem in the real theory. Maybe these kind of theories that provide some uh, uh, 
information or important information about the no. uh, 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 features of, uh, of, of uh, the analysis. That is the, the thing. Very good, very good. Um, uh, then, um, yeah, so secondly, this, uh, yeah, these ratios of uh, the accumulants or moments that you wrote, um, yeah, they, so they, this give you, I think you mentioned this tells you some information about uh, what happens in the, the very early stages of the collision. Is that right? Right. Yeah. So, well, so, so, so like how, how yeah, because again, I want to ask this again. So you have a, a, a chemical potential and a, and a temperature there. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, but uh, how, how early in the collision is this uh, probing? Because as the collision evolves, these are things that are going to change too, right? Yeah, one one way to uh, see what happened in the early times of the collision is these uh, hard props, the electromagnetic uh, props, right? That mm -hmm. can fly away from this um, uh, the, the reaction, right? And um, uh, from that uh, term, we can obtain uh, some information at, at early stage. But at, mm -hmm. at, uh, here, uh, the idea is, okay, um, you know, we, we need to, to see, let me say in, in uh, how do you say, um, the, the initial state, the geometry of the initial state need to match with what we tell uh, in, the, in the thermal, when, when the system thermalized, okay? Mm -hmm. So we need to have like a, a smooth continuation of the evolution of our system, right? And uh, 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 that uh, will, uh, 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 tell us a, a good description. So if um, in some uh, energies, right, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of, of this collision, we observe these effects, okay? Of course, it's not related only with the final stage. That comes from the ideas that the system thermalized and how thermalized is important to, uh, to see. And uh, that is we uh, see or expect that, um, or tell that this information is related with the early stage, not the final stage. The final stage mm -hmm. is, is really with the process of how thermalized, when thermalized, uh, how was the the uh, the uh, macroscopic inter, uh, the thermodynamics behavior of that system when uh, the system thermalized. So mm -hmm. that's it. Um, so so okay. yeah. So can you show me again the the this uh, this diagram with the, with the freeze out uh, was it a freeze out model of some sort uh, the statistical model when the statistical model yeah yeah this is very um was it that yeah then you showed me something else right the, where, where it was a uh, kind of a parabola that was going sideways or something it was uh, where would the yeah i think you missed maybe it's a little bit next maybe or ah uh, okay no uh uh oh, before is it? the parabola yeah it's it's, it's, it's this <laughs> yeah where you you were relating the energy to uh to this mu b oh ah, yeah, yeah yeah no it's a, it's almost at the end oh, it's in the end okay yeah oh oh okay um okay yeah so let me see again so and let me write something. So, so I, I, okay, I see. So, you, this is mu, and this is this mu. is mu. Okay, oh, mu and t. Uh, okay, and yeah. Sorry. So, how am I to understand what's going on in this diagram? Uh, um, like, like, so, so yeah. So this, this. Uh, this this path there, like what's 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 going on? Is that the... let, let, let me let me say something. Maybe I don't have here the, the plots, but look, uh, this model you know, can can tell us the number or particle per species that we can detect. Okay, mm -hmm. that is in this expression n j. This one. Okay, mm -hmm. so. With the experiment reports uh, the result. They have an amount of particles of each uh, for uh, each uh, species, right? And the model tried to find which is the t and the mu that match with that uh, values. 
okay? Mm -hmm. And with that T and MU, okay, they uh, provide a band, okay, where, because uh, this is related with the stage when all these uh, hadrons uh, stop to interact with each other, like mm -hmm. the out a uh, stage, right? And after yeah. that applies to the, to the detectors and we uh, observe uh, some amount of them. Okay, mm -hmm. with that T and D mu and, and that mu as a function of the temperature that uh, they, they plot this uh, curve. Let me see this. Mm -hmm. This is the maximum value of T and mu that can reach as a function of this uh, temperature in order to be consistent with the number of particles that they, they, they detect. Well, we, the, uh, we need to uh, do a, a lot of um, computation, simulation, actually, no? to, to see this. Yeah, I see, okay. Yeah, but uh, as I mentioned, that band that uh, tells us where is this uh, uh, freeze out line, it's not far from the line reported uh, where occurs or happens the chiral phase transition. So that is why we use this uh, curve uh, to parameterize mm -hmm. the mu v uh, as a function of s, and uh, after that try to find which uh, t is is the uh, one that in our model we observe as a critical temperature. Okay. Okay. I see. All right. Uh, thank you, Luis. Uh, you're welcome. Um, so, uh, hi. Oh, okay, well, go ahead, the TV. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask quickly. I think I, I think I lost the, you know, I think I lost track of it when you. So when you wrote down the the Lagrangian, um, it had these it had these parameters. Um, a a a and lambda um which i if i recall correctly you know you 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 it was so i think my question was about um you know what is the like what is the a in relation to lambda because i also saw like there was a there was a formula you wrote down where you said v naught equal to uh square root of a squared over lambda um, and because then at the end, uh, you talk about, uh, you know, you talk about fixing these three parameters. So I was just wondering by the time you get to that point in the calculation, uh, uh, how many, how many free parameters are you having to fix then? Uh, like, you know, by the time you get there, does this A have the, any, does this heavy what looks like a coupling uh, or something uh, have any relation to the, to, you know, to the lambda and what is this V naught? And yeah, just at the end, just at the end where you talk about, you know, something about the, you know, setting these three pre parameters using, um, you know, some lattice, uh, you know, uh, things and, you know, how many, at that point, how many free parameters are you, are you still left to fix? Okay, uh, thanks for the question. Look, we have three free parameters in our theory, okay? This is the uh, uh, mass uh, parameter, square that appears uh, square and this is the coupling uh, is a coupling constant okay between or among the the mesons and this is the fermion uh, meson or boson uh, coupling constant okay how uh, we fix that values um, there are many ways to fix um, that values. Uh, for example, one uh, way to fix uh, them is in vacuum. We can use, uh, for example, um, the information that we know from QCD related with the uh, chiral uh, condensate and F pi, and we can say something about uh, the um, the BEF, the minimum V zero V dot that I wrote uh, some slide before. And with that, we have a relation between lambda and a squared, right? But at, at, this, at the same time, we can uh, use, for example, the information that we know the masses of the pion and the sigma uh, in vacuum, and we uh, sum or, or uh, subtract one to each other in order to obtain uh, another relation 
between a squared and lambda, and with two equations, two parameters, or two uh, uh, variables, we solve the, the system. If we include g, we, we use, for example, the value of the mass of the quarks, okay, uh, in vacuum or um, uh, at low energies, and we fix the value of g. And we, we finish with, with that idea. But in this case, because we are not in vacuum and we want to explore what happened around the QCD phase transition or where the, the phase transition in this theory, we implement an, another idea. We will use the information of this um, uh, lattice QCD that tells us the curvature of that uh, transition line at low values of mu v. And we will use this equation, okay? This equation together with the equation that relates the set energy uh, um, of, of our, our model in order to see that when we put uh, these two, uh, uh, sorry, these two equations together with the equation of the effective po potential, we have three equations to solve and three uh, parameters that we need to fix. And we find the value of A squared, lambda and G um, that obeys these uh, curvatures of, that provide a lattice QCD, right? That, as I mentioned, that is not a unique uh, solution. There are many uh, a set a, or combination of A, lambda, and G. We try to prove uh, or try to check with many of that combination and see uh, if um, the result uh, will be consistent. The, the, the answer is yes. Um, well, we have uh, some... Um, a, error band, but uh, is not a, a significant, a significantly uh, large. But that is uh, how we uh, we implement. We need to try to use some physical insight, okay, in order to fix these uh, three um, uh, parameters. You need three equations, these three variables you fix, and the point is need, you need to see where we use um, this model and vacuum, at high temperatures, high densities, and try to fix um, that values in, in the in the in the in the situation that you are interested. Oh, okay, I think uh, I have a bit of clarity around that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so um, it looks like uh, that's, the, that's it for the, our questions. So. Uh, Luis, uh, th thank you, thank you again for, for a uh, nice uh, set of presentations. Um, it looked like very, very interesting work there. So, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, thank you everyone for for, for coming. You know, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, we, in the future we we will get uh, better numbers. You know, when we don't have. Uh, like uh, competing, we were a competing uh, <laughs> kind of summer school or lecture, whatever school happening with particle physics. And that's why I think our numbers are not uh, so great. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. All right. Thanks. Thanks uh, for the invitations. Uh, the invitation and uh, it was a pleasure for me to be here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, thank, right. thank you very much. Yes. Thanks, Louise. Uh, somebody Thank turn you. off the recording?